it's it's very difficult to 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 try to talk about anything without uh, without uh, 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 you know Gaza being on on one's mind and uh, the because it is it is a a truth that we cannot run away from or avoid uh, in the present historical moment it is accurate to say that Muslims collectively the Muslim Ummah however defined has betrayed Palestine and Jerusalem and it, this represents uh, such a deep, deep ignorance of history and loss of consciousness, loss of identity, loss of moral anchor. Because from Islam really began as an in, as a universal religion, as an international religion, not, not, and I underscore it, not when Islam break through in Hejaz and spread to Najd and then spread to Yemen. Islam really became an international universal religion when it freed the eastern territory that was under the dominance and control of the Byzantines. Uh, this has been an ongoing conflict between the East, Near Eastern culture and the close Western territories of Europe. And the, the, the symbol of this entire conflict is Palestine. And it has always been Palestine. When, when Muslims controlled Jerusalem, it, was, it meant Muslims now were in control of their own destiny, of their own sovereignty. They were present on the international plane, and it was a clear message that we no longer subjugate Near Eastern identity to Byzantine dominance and hegemony. And that is precisely why so many millions of Muslims lost their lives in a long protracted history defending Palestine. And that is also why for so long the West always looked to Palestine as the symbolic space for Western dominance over the East. And when in the current historical moment, especially American Muslim institutions, Canadian Muslim institutions, British Muslim institutions, Palestine is not in, in, present in their consciousness the way it should be. Jerusalem is not present in their consciousness. They don't understand why Palestine. They, they think that Kashmir is like Palestine, the Rohingyas are like Palestine, the Uyghurs are like Palestine. They, it, 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 that is just a, 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 a direct result of colonization and poor historical consciousness. And it is not enough for American Muslim institutions to come out and condemn violence or 
you know, some meek statement about how we want peace. It's, it's not enough. It, 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 those children that lost their lives, they lost their lives, why? Because Israel decided to assassinate, assassinate a member of the jihad. Why did they decide to assassinate the fellow? That's what started this. Not because he was convicted of any crimes, not because Israel claimed he was responsible for the actual death of any Israeli, but because they claimed that ideologically he might sometime in the future commit an act of violence against Israelis. No court, no charges, no due process, no actual guilt for an actual act. You are simply murdering this guy for what you believe his convictions and ideas are, which is something incredibly fascist. But Muslims are so meek today that they completely internalize fascist, fascist paradigms that dominate them. So Israel decided that this guy must die. And as a sign of complete Palestinian subjugation and surrender, we decide who is who gets to be free and who gets to be arrested? Who gets, who is put in pretrial detention and kept in prison for without charges for indefinitely? And who actually goes to a court of law? Even if you go to a court of law, you have no say as to the actual substantive law that you tried under because these are Israeli military courts that decide the process, that decide the substance. It's, they're not even responsive to international law. Israel does not abide by the Geneva Conventions. Israel does not abide by any of the international law standards, and it, it's even when it gives Palestinians some form of trial. But Israel wants to be able to kill a Palestinian and Palestinians to say, yes, sir. You know, you decide which of us lives or dies. So they killed this guy, and with him, let's not forget that there was a five-year-old child who was also killed. And then when the Palestinians say, well, you, you're you not allowed to do this. We're going to respond. This is an act of, an, of aggression, and we're going to respond to an act of aggression. We say, well... That is an open license for us to destroy, demolish, whatever we wish, at will, including killing these Palestinian children that, you know, and, and you have no recourse. And then in the con this context, Juma after Juma. Muslim khatibs in Britain, in the U.S., in Canada, sound meek. Sound... And Muslim organizations. Where is Zaytuna? I mean, Zaytuna is the one that claims to represent the most makes the, the strongest claims about representing the true Islamic tradition and allies itself with the Emirat and Emirat's love of peace. Where is the love of peace? Where is Jerusalem? It's really hard. It's... it's, it's um, the, the hypocrisy, I mean, uh, uh, when I think of Muslim academics, 
And I see in this context a Muslim academic maintain complete silence and complete disinterest, and then publish some learned thing about Shafi'i fiqh in the third Hijri center, uh, century. I mean, I, I have to admit to you, I, I just feel like I don't respect you. I don't respect you because I know that what, what, what motivates you is your selfish desire for a career. You want to be respected, you want to be admired, you want people to look up to you, you want to be known as a great academic, a great intellectual, but you betrayed the Islamic civilization. Why, why do Israeli kids, why do Jewish kids, why are they taught to live and, and live their lives for a cause? Why do they proudly proclaim, yeah, we are lawyers, we are doctors, we are this, we are that, but Israel and Zionism is in our hearts. We are willing to lay our lives down if you ever touch Israel. And on our part, we're all meek. It's as if we are embarrassed to say, it's as if we are embarrassed about our commitments. No, how no, 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 no. You know, as a student of the Quran, what is the what is the value of the Quran? If its normative lessons do not produce a normative consciousness that then translates to action agendas that are Quranic. If we study the Quran and then what we come out after studying the Quran, what comes out of this is that basically we are on the margins of humanity. We don't matter. Our lives don't matter. Our priorities don't matter. Our history doesn't matter. Then in what way does the Quran matter? لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله